Okay, before I show you how I make gaiters, let's have a little talk first of all about what gaiters are. Gaiter, of course, is a Japanese word which means they're kind of sandals, particular to Japan, um, or often they're referred to as clogs because they're made of wood. Uh, these are blanks from the uh, original Japanese version. The male, the male one is usually wider, the female foot is uh, a bit narrower. These are the typical Japanese sizes. So uh, here in Thailand I make the, the female one a little bit wider, the feet are uh, a little bit wider probably from the the way they're used. So um, you can see a traditional gaiter is not just wooden, like a wooden version of a flip-flop, but it has these two wooden blocks underneath, which they call ha, meaning teeth. So the ordinary ones have two teeth. There are versions with three or even a single tooth, but for now we'll just concentrate on the ordinary one. They've been used in Japan for many hundreds of years as the basic form of footwear um, and they're still used today but not very much by the ordinary people mainly when they have a festival and they're dressed up in their kimono or sometimes kids wear them for fun they like to click clack around on them and uh, students sometimes like to show their Japanese-ness by using their traditional kinds of footwear this design is probably particular to, to Japan. There are wooden shoes used in various countries around the world, but not usually of this kind of design. <coughs> so you'll notice that the, the teeth are not equally equidistant from each end. They're towards the back. That's of course because the foot is not, uh, the leg doesn't come into the middle of the foot uh, it comes in at the back, so the weight is more on, when we're standing up straight, the weight is on the back. And actually, when they're wearing them, the correct size, if you're measuring for somebody, the, they should be fitting comfortably, not tight at the front. And the, the actual heel will hang over the edge of the end of the gaiter by one or two centimetres. And that is actually a correct foot, fit, correct fit. It looks as though it's not correct, as though it should be within the bounds of the wood. But no, because the, 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 the way we stand, our weight coming down the leg and, and to the heel is actually on this rear tooth. And uh, so when we're walking, we're not walking flat footed and just going like this. We're actually walking normally and we go and tip to the front. So you get kick it back, kick it back, kick it back. Um, this will of course, from regular use, cause the front to get worn down before the actual teeth get worn away. Um, this is an old Japanese pair, the first pair I was given by a friend from Japan and they've had a lot of hard use. As you can see I've replaced the strap on one occasion and uh, the teeth have been worn down so I've put extra blocks on them. This was before I built my workshop and started doing, making my own so this was a bit of a rough job just gluing bits of wood onto the bottom. But they served the purpose. As you can see, it's been very worn away at the front. Um, now, ones I use regularly, I'll, I'll put a small piece of wood underneath uh, the fresh front, and so it would hit on that and start to wear that before it wears the actual. Because they're getting worn away quite sharply, they will eventually start to crack and flake off as well. So this pair I don't really use anymore, I have many more which I can make myself. The straps 
can be narrow or wide, very fat and soft. Um, and they're usually some form of cloth and uh, they have a, a, a piece of twine running through them which is then tied together underneath to uh, keep them in place. Uh, there is a proper knot which the Japanese use, I haven't managed to learn it yet. But uh, I use various, there's various techniques to join the front and I'll show you some later on. So the first thing we need to do when we're going to make another another point you might notice is that the hole for the front is in the middle. It's not right or there's no right or left for gator, so you can wear them on either foot. And if you walk with with a, a gait which causes the teeth to wear down on one side, as you see ordinary shoes often get worn down more on one side than the other. Depends how people walk then you can always swap them over and, and that will even it up. But um, they have a hole in the middle. Some people tried actually to make the hole to one side to give them a left and right. And uh, <clears throat> when we stand normally our feet are like this at a, at a V angle. And so when we're walking if you actually make the, the left and right where the hole comes in it causes the back end to knock together, which is not very good. So there is a point to this. It looks awkward, but it's not. They're fine to wear like that. Uh, the wood they use to make these traditionally is called polonia wood, which is a, a very light wood. Um, there is various varieties of it. Um, very fine grained, so you don't get wooden sharp splinters coming off and uh, hurting the feet. Um, it does wear away uh, if you use it regularly, but um, it's also fairly fairly a soft wood, so uh, it will. It's never hard and uncomfortable. It does sort of mould itself to your feet a bit after a long time. You'll see, you can see even depressions where the toes have been for a long time, and you'll get the marks, sweat marks from the the feet. But uh, and uh, the polonia wood is, is a very fast growing wood as well and another benefit of course for wearing them in hot countries like this in Southeast Asia is that the wood has a pleasant smell but it has some properties which insects don't like so you don't get many problems of um, termites or white ants and that eating wood all the, the normal wood in places like Thailand here, uh, the house wood and bamboo, they get eaten away quite quickly by insects. But this wood seems to have some self-protection against them and the insects don't like it, which is another advantage. If you're not using them regularly, store them away in a cupboard, you're not going to put it open and find them full of holes. So when we're going to make ourselves a pair, we have to measure the length of our foot to get the correct size. The width isn't quite so important, as I say, the, big, the male ones are rather wide, but um, the length is the important thing. And so, suppose your foot is length... Uh, this is nine and a half inches long, this one, this is a normal male size. Yeah, size, so that's about 24 and a half centimetres. Um, so if your foot was just about that length or slightly less, 23 centimetres, 9 inches, it's still a fine foot because it's fine fit because as I say your foot will overhang, the heel will overhang slightly. Another advantage of these, if you're in a hot country where you regularly wear flip-flops, the kind of uh, lightweight sandals which uh, the, the, the floor of the sandal is actually on the ground. So when it's raining and there's puddles of water or even mud uh, on the ground, walking normally you get the, the slap 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 as the, the thing slaps up as you walk. And because the ground is touching, 
this flips up dirty water from the back, up the back of your, your trousers or whatever. Um, but because gaiter, a little bit heavier, and the part touching the ground is just these here. So you don't get the dirty water thrown up the back of your legs, which is yet another advantage. And they're natural products, so unlike rubber or plastic, they're biodegradable. Um, they're fairly easy to repair if they do get worn down. If you look after the, the front so it doesn't wear too much, um, the actual teeth can be find almost any block of wood you can put on them to repair them with. You'll see that uh, <clears throat> the traditional Japanese ones are made from a single block of wood. So these are actually carved out and uh, the grain runs along here. So actually these wear away quite quickly. Now the ones I make uses a block and I have it with the grain, the ends of the grain down to the ground and that makes it a lot stronger. It takes a lot longer to wear away uh, with the ends of the grain hitting the ground and uh, it's easier to make with a separate top and the separate blocks. Uh, I know the traditional one is one piece but there must be a lot of wastage of uh, wood in making these and because it is a very lightweight wood and, and can break off especially because the grain is running along here they often strengthen them by putting in a dowel uh, drilling them and making a dowel in that rear tooth to add strength and stop them snapping off so easily but of course if you're making them with the separate block you've got the grain of the wood running down and that gives extra strength too You've got to find a decent glue to uh, use to attach them. I first of all started off using two-part epoxy which you've got to mix in equal amounts and that's strong enough but it's awkward to use so now I have the more usual carpenter's glue. This one's Gorilla Glue or um, The TLA adhesive latex, they're PVA glues, polyvinyl um, acrylic glues. And, they, and uh, the wood itself, the, the glue is actually stronger than the wood. So if anything's going to give way, it's going to be the wood um, bond to the glue, not the glue itself. So uh, they provide quite a good method of it. Uh, attaching the blocks to the uh, flat. So <coughs> I use, because I make quite a lot of these to sell, I, I made up a little template which I um, just drew around from this Japanese one and uh, marked the places for the holes and the front lot but if you're only making a single pair you don't need them. Um, and as for the wood itself I have the polonia wood here. Um, this is uh, quite a thin board which was cut from a, a, a thicker one at the lumber yard I got the lumber from. This is an ordinary one inch one inch block of wood. Um, this has been planed on both sides. Uh, you can use this. It's uh, quite a bit thicker than the traditional one. But uh, you could also cut it down. This is a little bit thinner than the original. But uh, it will work. Of course, the thinner one will be lighter weight. The thicker one will be a bit heavier, but certainly stronger. And I have another one which is more like one and a half inches. Um, you can use this for certain other types which require a thicker platform. But I tend to use it to make the blocks. So this size is nice for making the, uh, the blocks from.
and then we cut it we have to cut it across the grain here measure the size so you've got nice square blocks the same same width as the same length as the width and cut them across and then you'll cut them to size later if you make the mistake of going down this way then they'll be lying along the way and the grain will be in the wrong direction so when you put them on the grain will be more like the traditional but it won't be so strong so I've chosen my wooden board here um, Polonia does have quite a lot of knot holes but uh, I'll make two pieces from this side that's quite a nice grain pattern first of all I'll plane the edge to give me an edge to work from Trim off the size, correct width. Use the template. Make sure the fence is the right distance away. just part of making gaiters not like furniture they don't have to be exact sizes Obviously.
looks nicer if they are a perfect match. And to, so that's the two pieces I'm going to use. Nice grain through them. So with the pieces cut off, now I'll just use my template to uh, mark with a bradle, make a mark where the holes are going to be. We drill the holes before we attach the wooden blocks. Another template, then we go away. Right, to make the holes I'm going to use a hand drill, the ordinary wooden kind of bit, and So for the big holes I use the half inch bit, the smaller one, an ordinary This is an ordinary wooden bit there, with a little point on the end. So, now I've drilled the holes, I'm going to do a bit of sanding to make them all square. So I use a drill in that front hole to hold them in the same position together.
So I'm going to make the wooden blocks now from this uh, one and a half inch wood. I've set my table saw fence using the upper piece to get it just a little bit wider and uh, this piece will be about just about almost exactly in half. I'll get my best planed edge against it. Don't forget my safety goggles. of wooden blocks, square wooden blocks, just the right to uh, start putting on the gator. There's a wonderful smell to this wood when it's freshly cut as well, the sawdust and when you're sanding too. If you don't have any wood thick enough to make these blocks. You can uh, do what I've done before and glue two thinner pieces of wood together and uh, that works fine since the glue is quite strong. These are a little bit narrower for the, the women's size of gator. Oh, we're just about ready to start gluing on these blocks now. Make sure that they're fitting nice and flat, not rocking about, because one or the other is not quite mating together. So, get our glue. Squeeze out and put it right up next to the holes there.
use the ratio to make sure we get the other leg in the right place. for a while to sit. Okay, now the glue's dried. I've taken off the clamps and we need to do a bit of sanding to clean up these edges of the blocks, level with the top and to give the top a nice smooth sanding and round off the edges.
Okay, you can see the uh, strip of cloth here. I'm prepared for sewing up to make the straps. This one's about five, six centimeters wide. You can also make them thicker. Have them uh, up to about nine or ten even. They're very fat straps. So I just fold it over. Rub it against the edge here. Decrease it a little bit. Okay. I like to use the type of stitch which uh, is straight but goes back and forth on itself so it makes a stronger stitch. The ordinary simple stitch is uh, not really strong enough and uh, zigzags are a bit awkward, makes the stitching too wide. going to be longer than you need so you get the main part stitch the right width apart avoiding any roughness in the uh, cut edge and you'll cut it to the correct length later on So we've got a nicely stitched tube here. Now what we've got to do is turn it back inside out. It's easier if we do this when it's shorter so we'll cut it to the right length first. Right, once we have our cloth sewn up into a tube everything's a lot easier when it's a a wider fat piece of cloth for a fatter strap to uh, turn it inside out and to fill it. Everything's a lot easier when it's uh, a wider one instead of a narrow one. So, uh, this one started off as about eight or nine centimeters wide before it was sewn together. So I push it down the tube. I have several tubes, plastic and aluminium, different sizes. Push it down the centre of the tube and uh, then I turn it over one end. And the outside. Put it over the outside of the tube. Now we can just push it like this and it turns it inside out. So where we've got a piece ready to be filled. I've already measured the length of this to be correct for the uh, size of gator. 
from the measure from the holes around the front and leave plenty so that it's not too tight. So I get my cord here which is just ordinary string, natural string and uh, I'll take a length just about arms outstretched in length so it's over a meter long get two pieces the same length because I'll be making a pair this padding material I got from the cloth shop it's sort of nylon like fiber so this is a thin sheet not the big fat things they use to fill pillows with probably similar kind of material so uh, I measure the strip and that's the right length so I'll cut a wideish piece here because I've got quite a wide strap narrower strap would be smaller and I'll cut it in two for each of the two separate Traps. So, with one of my strings, I'll start it down the tube. And roll it over. The string and start pushing it down in the tube. Show this on all the way, and the whole thing's in the a tube. I don't know if other people use other systems to make these, but I do it this way, it's the way I devised that seems to work. Of course the proper gator shops in Japan nowadays, very few of them actually make any gator. They um, merely assemble them. They probably get the wooden blanks from a factory in bulk and uh, the straps which they call hanae. They probably buy those from another supplier in different colours and sizes. So really the, the ordinary gator shops, they just, the customer comes, chooses the wooden base of the right size and design they want and uh, because some of them are actually coloured with lacquer not just the plain wood the majority are just the plain wood because some of the wood has very nice grain patterns and uh, they choose the hanae the colour style they want and so the shopkeeper then just puts them together so we've got that just hooking out the end and uh, Put the strap, put the cloth on the tube. OK. 
key. If I take that to the end there, let's grab that and pull it out and they'll come out together. Oh, nicely assembled. Disappeared a bit into one end. Let me make sure it's level with the end. And the other one can go in a little bit. And if it's a bit too long, we can just cut off the white padding before we assemble it to the gator. And this is just one of the pair. And uh, just make sure the string is equal legs. And that's one done. Okay, now we've got our wooden blank ready. We've used some smooth sandpaper to give it a nice smooth finish. You can use a rotary sander or do it by hand with a sanding block. Once we're happy with that, there's nothing much really to be done with the wood anymore. So we get our strap ready. Uh, Hannah, I, this is how I check the length. When I cut the tubing to the correct length, I have it going around the uh, front hole and uh, at least long enough to go down the back holes. So we've now got to prepare this. We've got the string on each end to the same length. And, uh, so make sure the stuffing is inside. And then use a long sharp needle to make a hole right through. It doesn't have to go through the string itself. And I take the end, pass it through the eye of the needle and pull it out. Sometimes very tough. So I use a pair of parallel pliers to help me. it through okay right so that I pull not quite and come back through here and I can pull that tight this one I also don't pull right through I come back to the end again leaving a loop and pull that tight again. Do the same on the other end. Back through here again. And tighten it. Through here again. Tighten it. I've got a little loop. Right. Now we need to start tying it on. So. Straight bit through first, followed by the loop. Try and squeeze them together and pull on the loop, and the straight string so as it comes through. Nicely. Now I can see where the seam is and put that to the inside. Do the other side, don't need to pull that loop tight yet. Do the other side. Just 
straight run through it loops a bit long and then the loop goes through it right together the other. Now find that seam again. Make sure it's equal. Come into the same place and we can measure and see how far we come towards that front hole. We don't want it to be too tight, not too loose. So these are just about okay. Now I'll put that put this one through that loop and that one through this loop and tighten them both down on each other. each other and I can bring this string through to lighten that loop down lock it in the same on this one through and lock it back against that. That should keep them pretty well in place you can see. Now I use a little plastic needle here and uh, I push through bring this string around the back around again and then come up through and pull tight so I'm tightening it up towards the base of it there and do that a couple or three times same for the other side. This is a method I devised myself to lock them. The Japanese actually use a different knot. I tried to find out on the internet how to do it but I couldn't. And uh, there again right Locking around there, nice and tight. Now one more time. That tightens up nicely, and we can finish off with a little. Instead of just going over once, you go over twice and pull it together, that locks together nicely. And you can see that there, how it is locked. I'll just trim off the long ends, and that's it.
I can now put on this just to make the full length. Oh. Yeah, it's nicely locked in place and a nice length coming over here and do the other one but uh, then we'll start on attaching the front hull right there are several different ways you can attach to this front hull the loop which will go between your big toe and the next toe Okay, one method you could use is to use a thickish piece of plastic tubing which will fit in that hole. I'm just level at the bottom there. And attach this with string. Just the same simple string and uh, we can attach with a double loop like this and come down through and then tie it off underneath that's one method you could use Instead of using the string, you can use electrical wire, which does have some advantages. It's slippery, so it goes through the holes and things easier, and it locks, still ties up and locks quite well. Um, another way is to use the same material, but sewn into a much smaller tube. In that case we would use our little plastic needle again to attach the string through the middle of it. And then we get into the middle ready to go so we then put that over the thing here. put these two ends through the, the hole and then through then we'd have to squeeze these together and thread them through the hole as well through but we don't want to make the string too tight so we haven't got enough room for the to go between the toes you have to experiment with the length of this what's comfortable for yourself and depends on the size the thickness of the, the strap here this would do okay right down to the, the bottom there it would still be comfortable enough work so for attaching the bottom a simple knot will work but with constant use and pressure if it's basic string like this it eventually gets squeezed and slowly pulled into the hole which makes the strap then rather loose at the front you can use a a little d-ring like this of metal which helps prevent the knot pulling in uh, but they're quite expensive so what I prefer to do is make my own with just a, a smaller piece of tubing 
and the other one, the thinner piece, and uh, a small tie lock, and pull that, make it into a, a little hoop. Cut off the end, so that's even thicker than the D-ring and doesn't really get pulled. So I would put that on one leg, then another piece of string, and tie a simple overhand knot to lock it. Try not to pull on the string and uh, close that up. Then I would again make another a double overhand. Which would serve to lock that. And then Again, double overhand in the main big one, and another one to lock that again. Exactly the same knot, whether you're using the string or the electrical wire. And there you are. It looks a bit rough, but it does the job okay. Cut the ends. And there's your nut. It's finished and attached. You'd have to make sure the adjustment is correct for your own feet. And it's not too tight, not too loose. If it's a bit tight at first, actually, it doesn't matter because use will stretch these natural materials a little bit. So if it's just a tiny bit snug at first, it's probably going to be correct later on after a little bit of wear. Um, it's not very pretty. The traditional Japanese they actually have a, a little metal cover um, see if I can find one yeah. here's a, a child's Japanese made one and they use this little metal cover the same size for all which goes over and encloses the knot so the knot's getting the knot isn't getting bashed on the ground uh, when you walk in it just covers it all up makes it look neater but they're not for sale over here in Thailand I asked in the mail order catalog and they want a dollar for each set which is expensive <sighs> not worth it you just add too much to the price so that's one finished and I have to make another and finish the pair. So there we have our finished pair of gaiter. Um, nice patterns in the wood. Very diff not difficult for uh, uh, experienced woodworker, very simple techniques and tools required. You could probably do without machines, just a drill and file and, and a saw. This is another method I sometimes use to attach the front, just the thin tube made into a loop and pushed through. Um, as you can see, this has <coughs> this has the electrical wire used inside and tied into a knot and I put little strips of wood with glue on the front to save the actual front of the 
gator getting worn down that will make them last a lot longer one once they wear to a, a, a thin wedge that they start to split Another style you sometimes find are these single tooth gator. They're called Ippon, which means one, or Tengu gator. There's a, a sort of fictional monster, probably a cartoon monster, which wears these things. Um, you sometimes see the wearing them on parades when they've got the full kimono. Males usually wear them, I don't see females so much. Um, they're easy to walk in. The balancing when you're standing up isn't so good, but uh, these are traditional from Japan. I put these rubber stops on the front and back because otherwise they're quite an angle resting front or back when you're putting them on, taking them off. It just relieves that angle. They're nowhere near worn enough to need replacing, but these are replaceable. They don't usually glue them in or only a tiny spot of glue so that when they get worn down you can put in a new piece but uh, with this thicker body and angled design they're a lot more complex to make I have made them myself um, for people who wanted them but uh, they're just a fun item really a totter around a bit like being on stilts These are some old ones I made with longer teeth, a bit heavier because of the extra wood, um, but still comfortable enough. And these have a thin strap. I, I prefer the thicker strap, so I combine two of them just to be doubled up, and they're quite comfortable. Um, Another pair of the traditional Japanese ones, the same thick base, and but two instead of a single tooth. And again, some quite early ones I made with a thicker. This was before I found a source for the polonia wood. This was another wood. It's a bit heavier than the polonia wood, um, and. The teeth I put on originally, I was using the epoxy glue, which is a lot more, it's, it's harder and some, sometimes can, can uh, give way because it is so brittle. And this had an extra piece put on to give it more height. And there is... Uh, Yes, another variety, which uh, again uses the the thicker base with the angled, and these have thinner teeth, but much taller usually. These are often called rain gator, um, and uh, in the old pictures of old Japan, you see many. Of the gator we're wearing are like this quite quite high and uh, with the narrower teeth you see a lot of the adults and children wearing these but they wore them for everyday use so obviously in the rain they do keep you far above especially if you've got a nice long kimono on which you don't want dragging in puddles um, you don't have to be undecorous if you're a lady and Oh yeah. You don't have to pull your uh, kimono up so it's showing off ankles or too much leg. And with these they'll keep you away from the puddles in the ground. Um, sometimes they say chefs for who made sushi. Um, also used to wear these because the sushi maker was working with 
fish and other bits of things and when he's preparing the sushi bits fall down onto the ground so working on these keeps him away from the muck on the ground where he's working so that's a few different types you should give it a go if you're interested right I've revised my method of fixing the front loop on actually I'm doing it now the same as the Japanese do I couldn't quite get the hang of it before so I use various things like plastic tubing and that to fix it on but now I've found that the best the old ways as they say are the best so when we get to this stage where we attach in the uh, you can use just the, the plain string itself or put uh, small cloth tubes around it matching the colour of this or not it's up to you uh, I want to get a decent gap there so I'm not pulling it so tight um, that uh, you'll be uncomfortable to wear. So I don't know, I got that gap. I'll turn it over. First of all, tie a knot. Then, and that hasn't hasn't pulled it through. Now. Another piece of string, I'll lay across here and tie a knot across that. And what you do is just twist these together. And now I've got to get it through that loop. I use a pair of needle nose pliers. I find they work very well. So now I can pull this tight so I've got this loop here and I put the string grasp the string with the and pull it through. There we are. So that's all of those four layers of string are now pulled through back underneath. And that's it. I now pull this tight and tighten up the knot. That stays really well. The methods I used before didn't seem to be so clear and so uh, this is far simpler and quicker doesn't need much extra material and seems to last well it seems to be the same way that the, they make it on the Japanese now I can just cut these off the excess unneeded that's it I know the Japanese use a little um, metal cap to cover the knot and they nail it in place but we can't find those here and to order them from Japan they want a couple of dollars for each one which is crazy so I just do without and uh, there you go I know this isn't matching colour in this case but uh, it does the job <laughs>